So what we did was we started off by ingesting uh, raw Amazon and review data from uh, AWS, um, basically using a combination of uh, uh, PySpark and Cyber Cubal and H2O. Um, so the, the first block here is, uh, I should probably make sure this has been run. All right, good. Um, is basically just reaching out to a Amazon um, server, grabbing data, which is a large collection of Amazon reviews, and then turning it into a, um, a, a parquet uh, data store. Once we have the data, uh, first thing we want to do is uh, analyze it to see what kind of data is available inside of it. Um, so the first thing we want to do is just a simple count, how many different reviews are there in this data set. So we do a simple uh, data dot count, and we find out that there are uh, just over 160 million reviews in the data set, which is a very large data set. Um, and we probably want to uh, narrow down into what exactly we want to analyze. So next step is to see what attributes we have for each of these reviews. Uh, so we just do a, a data dot columns to see which columns there are for this data set. Uh, you can see there's things ranging from what marketplace was used, what the customer ID was, uh, product title, star rating, et cetera, uh, review dates. The key things that we want to see here are um, the uh, actual review itself, which is the review body, as well as the star rating, uh, which is right here. And then we'll look at some of these other attributes as we go through. So uh, this is a data set that goes all the way back to uh, 1994. Um, but you can see that it ranges in amount of data uh, that is available to you. Uh, back in 1994, uh, actually, this one's a bad data point. It has an epic point. So it's first in 95 uh, with 216 reviews, and it goes all the way up to two, 2014 and part of 2015, where we're up to uh, almost 50 million reviews per year. Um, so to downsize the data a little bit, we you can pick which uh, year you want to review. Uh, right now, we've selected 2004. You can put in whatever number you want here, uh, and we run the analysis with whichever year you want. Um, once you've done that, we want to know how many there are in just that in that year, and it turns out there's um, 1.2 million. And then let's see what. Uh, how many there are per category. So what are the different product categories that are available to you and how many are there in each of those? As it would make sense, number one thing for Amazon is books and music and videos. It goes all the way down and it goes all the way down to gift cards. I'm not sure why anyone's reviewing gift cards, but <laughs> you can do that. Um, so the next thing is to see what the star rating is. So what's the distribution of star ratings um, for that year? Uh, and you can see, for some reason, almost everyone puts a five on things that they review, uh, a few fours, and then down to ones. In different years, this actually turns to be mainly fives and ones. So you get a very bifurcated data. You either love something or you hate it, and there's not much in between. Um, so once we've seen that, we can uh, go into uh, what's the average star rating for each product category. Uh, and there's different ways of visualizing this data. Uh, just doing a simple bar graph here. So you can see the lowest rated ones are major appliances, which kind of makes sense. They break all the time uh, and people don't really like them. All the way up to uh, digital video, which is a pretty simple content um, that you have access to. Uh, and you can see where they, anything else falls in here. Uh, so next thing that you want to do is you can pick uh, which category you want to actually look into. Um, in this case, uh, let's change this uh, just for fun. Uh, we can sure. put in, uh, oh, I guess we'll, we'll just leave it as PC. Um, but you can change it. Uh, you can fil This then filters it. Uh, you can say which uh, star rating do you want to see the top words for. Uh, so for PCs, uh, the best, the top words are talking about cards and how great they are, how much they like them, the computers, the mice, et cetera. Um, if we wanted to change this, we want to look at uh, you know, sports. Uh, and just update that. Add a run. Cool. 
see what happens. Okay, we'll keep going and go back to it. Um, the number of uh, total video or total reviews that were in PCs was 14,000. Um, of those 14,000, we're going to analyze them and see what the sentiment is for different words and how we can use that to predict uh, which words uh, exist. Um, so the next thing, we want to remove all the, the silly words like the, a, and, uh, et cetera, that have absolutely no real meaning in English. Um, so we load in a collection of stop words um, from uh, an H2O repository, um, and then we tokenize the data so that we break up each, uh, each review into sentences, and then we break those into uh, uh, words, load those all up, uh, and uh, build a model that is uh, word to vec. So basically, what you're doing is you're taking each word that's in your data set and converting it into a vector um, of a certain length that uh, allows you to make it rather than a binary, this is this word, it's this concept rather than a specific word. This allows you to get synonyms or near neighbors for certain words. So you can uh, look things up here. So for example, terrible, uh, you can see similar words are lousy or joke, horrible, awful, abysmal, uh, poor, miserable, etc. Uh, you can put in any word you want there and see which uh, words come up based on it. Uh, then we're going to load in um, and train a deep learning model to do the sentiment analysis. So th this word to vec transformation uh, it basically takes all the reviews, transforms them based on this word to vec model that we learned up above, and then um, prepares the, the data by getting rid of any empty values. We don't want any nulls coming into the system. Um, and we're splitting it into a 8% training data set and a 20% test data set. The next thing we do is do a grid search across all of the deep learning parameters within H2O. Um, and the different variables that we're giving them are the number of uh, nodes at each hidden layer, as well as how many layers there are. So for example, this uh, is saying two layers, one for 17 nodes, one for 32, all the way up to four layers of 100 nodes each. And then changing the L1 optimization, uh, ranging uh, around uh, one times 10 to the uh, We run that, and it comes out with uh, what the model grid results are. Uh, we can pick the best one here. Uh, in this case, it was. Let me scroll down. Uh, it's not letting me scroll down. Uh, there we go. Um, in this case, zero, so the 1,000 or 100, 100, 100. Um, scrolling down, uh, we. I uh, can update this model. I'm not going to do that right now because it takes time to learn it. But the last time we had done this model, it was 10, 10, 10, because it was a different data set. Um, you can train this model now that's going to take in the review and predict the star rating, which is a idea of what the sentiment is. So you have a higher star rating, better sentiment. Lower star rating, lower sentiment. Um, and then you can uh, put in whatever you'd like here. Uh, this is the best product in the world. Try running it. Um, come down here and then predict based on that. Oh, buggers. Uh, I forgot to run everything else. So we'll do this real quick. And I'll talk you through the rest of it and come back to it. Um, so now that you've run this model, what you would be able to do is say, um, given a review or really any uh, tweet in the world or any right up in the world or any social media that you want, an email even, you can say, give me that text and I'll predict what the sentiment is. And then it'll tell you uh, either there's a really negative sentiment and we should uh, contact this user and see what we can do to fix this so that there isn't bad press in the, going out on social media or follow up with really positive uh, users and say, uh, hey, we want to reward you and keep you as a loyal uh, customer. Um, as it goes through, um, you can see and things like not bad, but I've had better. See what that comes back as. Um, you can put in anything you would like. 